for me, it wouldn't have worked. And I think women shouldn't forget that they must think individually and not imitate men. That's the biggest mistake. If there isn't something very primitive about uh, society's uh, demand that the woman who bears the child looks after the child? And that women, to go to pub and drink, the broader sense of the world, but to oh. provide everything and for a child, children have a and not to let the child out, out in the street like European that. European country, certainly. I mean, this is one of the few places. This is a and the attitude one. in general is that women should have stayed at home. The There's a school down the road. Um, the that's the only one that's got nursery facilities before home. they go to school. Very, very. Bad. And perhaps yeah, think uh, differently. Uh, Instead of saying about, I always men felt take 50 50 choice. responsibility for child. And financially, it wasn't really a, 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 a major problem that she, she, if she did or didn't work. But it was always spilling this choice. I, mean, I always thought that she would go back. But I, I, didn't, I didn't think she'd find a, a not a complete life, but I think she'd be completely happy. Addiction! Addiction! We all fall down! you into college, can she? No. Well, how's mummy going to do all her studying? Eh? I don't know. Because I find it difficult when you're about, don't I? <laughs> you was excited when you woke up? Yeah, mate. Clapped your hands, didn't you? You said, oh, go to college with mummy. Yeah. Went like that, didn't you? Being a mother, it's. Um, I suppose before I had Alex, I wouldn't have given a damn either about childcare, and now, of course, it affects me. Yeah, it's it's so isolating, just being with a child. It's, it's not enough. But you, you don't get a choice. You have, you have a child, and and it's like you pay for it. You know, because you've got to stay in every day. You've got to, you, you know, you've got to get, you've got to go through it all, getting them ready, getting them whatever. You can't afford childcare. I can't afford childcare. And then I was lucky enough to get him in a in a nursery. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had the opportunity. My responsibility is also being a mother, helping to run the nursery, and being a student. I did apply for a place here. But uh, I was told there's a waiting list of, I don't know, two years. So then I would have finished my course by the time she'd actually been allocated a place. People do have children and, and you know, it's, it's um, whether you like it or not, it's often women that have to cope with that. I mean, it's not as if it's a great political, you know, thing that we're doing. We just want people to be aware of all the problems that are are happening if you've got children and I'm, I suppose I didn't really realise that before I had a child myself that there were these problems like that's how I think most people in the college are they just don't um, they can't understand what it's like to have a child or to go to work or study I mean the I don't know where the man's gone. Improvements would you like to see perhaps the government making to help students or parents or perhaps just childcare nationally? What do people feel that the sort of improvements that could be made? The government is saying all this about um, parents going back to work and um, tax relief on money spent in, on crash places for, for um, people at work. I don't see why they can't extend that provision to to colleges. So we've got, what, over 3,500 students here and 18 place crash. It's ridiculous. We've been having these um, Kids in College Days. It's about the third one over the year. We felt very much that we needed to start getting doing some direct action, having demonstrations, being very visible with the kids around college, proving to the college authorities that the problem isn't going to go away. Oh, 
what they've actually said in that Equal Opportunities Policy is that they would like to actually improve their childcare, but they are restricted by a University Funding Council restriction. Now, we've actually found out this year that that's not true, that the ban has actually been lifted, and there's absolutely nothing to stop them from improving their childcare facilities other than money. Don't you think it's important? If people don't see us, then they won't know, will they? What? That there isn't enough childcare. Yeah? They'll think everybody's okay. They won't. Well, they won't. They will they think everybody's at school and that everybody's okay, and they're not. My family, although this, like, they've been very supportive, but um, they felt Alex was too young, shouldn't leave him. You know, what will it do to him and all this? but I felt that it, it would be good for him because I think that the, that the child's isolated as well, which he was. And by going to the nursery at, at an early age, then he, he, he met lots of other people and he's, I think he mixes well because of that. I feel like I'm handing him over to my mum. I just have total confidence in her and if anything happened to him I think I'd think, feel all right about it I mean she's she would do as as my mother would do and, and that's a really reassuring feeling when you're away away from them so much um, I'm in my third year of leaving him really and I, I think I've got just a bit more used to it but uh, you do you do have days where you wonder why you're doing it why you're going through all this and uh, and I think he's all right. It's more you. No, it's a relief. It's it's nice. It was nice. It was freedom, and it's it's not the same as going out for a night or going out for one day. It was it was freedom, and I knew I was going to go every week, and it was nice. But I also felt guilty about leaving him. Would he be all right? Would he would he cry when I wasn't there and all that? And that takes. And I still feel that now, when he goes to school, I still feel bad. I said, I don't. I think you always do. You always feel like you should be with them or you should spend more time with them or do more things with them. I don't think you ever feel like you do enough. But I think that you need to think about yourself as well. God, press hard. Hey, what's she doing? I'll we'll see you tonight, OK? No. Kiss. Hello, Jack. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. No. <laughs> Give me a kiss. All right. <laughs> I'll see you tonight. Come on. Bye-bye, my mate. No. <laughs> Oh, it was just awful. It was just. Hey, I'll see you tonight, okay? You get, I, it upsets you so much. I mean, he's he's always cried when I've left him, and I don't think you ever get used to that. Well, I don't. I think. And if you if you've had a bad night or you're tired, it just adds to your. Um, well, with me, I think it's guilt that you're doing the right thing. It's it's just horrible, but I, I think you. I, I'd made a decision and I had to go through with it. Right. A childminder will be based in the area where the parent lives, so she's local. She'll be local to the today. child's community and when the time comes she can take the child to playgroup, to nursery class, to mother and toddler group, um, to the toy library. So the child has been firmly rooted in their own community amongst their peers that they're going to grow up with later on. Um, well, I have two every day and the third one I have one day a week and I also take Amy to school. She used to be one of my children that I married and now I just take her to school. Childminders take more than one child from the same family and they take children after the age of five. So that's a tremendous benefit to working parents, that their childcare doesn't sort of stop dead at the age of five, and then other alternatives have to be found. And about 40% of childminders look after children after school and during the school holidays. I started basically because I wanted to work, earn some money, but I wanted to also be at home for my own child. So childminding is an ideal job. You've got the best of both worlds, you can be with your own child and also be working as well. The National Childminding Association exists for that kind of thing, to form groups of childminders so that they can meet together in that way. They give each other support, they give each other advice, they can share toy libraries, equipment libraries and so on. 
Um, we find that's very important. It's also a tremendous training resource. Where child minders are meeting as a group, they're far more likely to undertake training together. And they can learn from each other as well as undertaking formal training. Before I started coming here, I was getting really fed up with child minding. I've been doing it for nearly 10 years now, and I was thinking, oh, I need to really move on to something else. But then I started coming here, and I thought, oh, it's all right. You know, I've got somewhere to go now. I think if you want to become a child minder, you don't only just do it for the money, no. but you do it because you like you children. Like, oh, yeah. And oh, if yeah, you so yeah. you like and you look after them just as if they are your own, right. and they are happy to come to you. Mm. No? So I wish there was some sort of um, set wage. Do you know what I mean? Because mm. you have to discuss the money. And like most of us here, we don't like that side of it. We're not having, having to say to the mums, well, you know, we need to be yeah. paid this and that. We, we don't like it. I mean, I know Olive's the same. Mm. Just so you get some mums and they come and they say, oh, yes, that's fine. That's right. And then you get another mum and say, oh, that much? Is yeah. that what you're charging? Yeah. I can't afford all that's that. Right. And, you know, they seem to think that it's your yeah. job as well, it's your livelihood as well. But they they can only ask right. what a parent You're can afford to pay. And, and most childminders are very conscious of the fact that it's hard for the parents they work for to find the money at the end of each week. On the other hand, about two-thirds of the childminder's wages are expenses which go straight out again in caring for the child so that she's left at the end of the week with very little money indeed and you will not find any childminder, for example, who has to pay tax on her earnings because they never earn enough. But um, it's a full-time job, you know, it is. from and morning to night. Well, if you were a nursery teacher, I mean, you, you, I don't know what the, the set wage is early there, but I mean, if you work eight hours a day in a nursery, you're looking after children. And same. also, your so hours different. finish, don't you? I mean, sometimes... Through no fault of their own, but our mums are delayed coming to collect the kids, so you've got they them for longer, you know, you have them for a long, it's a long day. And the temptation then, if you can, is to take only parents on high incomes, teachers' children are popular, um, because they have nice school holidays, and to perhaps ignore the needs of parents who are lesser paid and can't afford your rates. And I think that that means that parents in lower paid jobs often find childcare very difficult indeed to find. I think one of the difficulties of all of this argument is that there are many young girls that I know who are one parent families who want to go to work and they don't particularly want to stay at home all day and be dependent on the state. But the cost of childcare is so much now that it just isn't worth their while to go to work. They would have to be earning well over £160 a week to enable them to pay for childcare, certainly in London, and then compensate for their lack of benefits. You know, it's so much money to pay childminder when you go out to work, so I think, you know, if you're a mother, you should really stay until the children are catch school age. The childcare should be shared between the father and the mother. A good parent, I think, is people who are prepared to provide sufficient time to their children to give them um, to the best of their advantage. Well, I'd like to see, like, in work situations that there have to be a crash. Women shouldn't forget that, first and foremost, they're women, and that, well, I think children... Um, the effect of the church in Britain on women has been quite profound, and the attitudes to staying at home. The position of a mama in society is not as well respected as it ought to be in the United Kingdom, nor, as I say, is right, the Victorian sure. era. Um, the, the line of demarcation between men and women was very strong in this country, and I think that's part of the attention paid by society to the needs of the working mother. I think the working mother... There is a shortage of skills, and women can fill that um, space. And that's really where we're at at this moment. No, not, oh, no, no, not on her hair because she doesn't like that too much. Wash her back for her. Again, it was this whole thing about feeling worthwhile. I think that was the main thing. I just didn't feel that I had anything else to offer apart from being a mum. And that wasn't enough for me. So I went back. <laughs> but I did find towards the... After about two or three months that I was feeling less... As though I was contributing less to the partnership. Um, I don't know whether that was because I wasn't going out to work, because I wasn't bringing in my share of the money. I, I, I don't know what it was, but I did feel I was contributing less. Come on, then. Oh. 
It was set up to retain staff within the hospital. Uh, women were leaving to stay at home with their children because they couldn't find other facilities. So the hospital decided to set up the day nursery to retain staff and hopefully recruit more staff in the future. We have middle and bank um, sharing some of the places. They, they are allocated a third of the places. Well, at the moment there's only a very tiny number of workplace nurseries and the majority are in hospitals. There's 20 local authority workplace nurseries, about 50 in hospitals, and perhaps 40. We're not sure how many employer-funded nurseries there are at the moment. The Midland Bank have opened 25 so far, but only two of those are nurseries entirely for their staff, and the other 23 are in partnership with colleges and hospitals. So there's an element of double counting. And I don't think so many people in the service side, you know, maybe staff nurses on the wards use it. I have a colleague who's in education, so a, a tutor uses it. Um, and maybe some people in management, but I, I don't know, I mean, I don't know of the figures, but I don't know that a lot of the staff nurses that are on the wards use it. It's also, I mean, it's, it's £1.50 an hour um, per child. And I think, you know, for a lot of people, um, you know, who aren't on a very good salary, that's actually quite a lot of money. And let's remember it's the mother who's going out to work, it is her child, and it's absolutely crucial that she contributes towards the cost of caring for her child. I don't think we can look around and ask the state to take away from everybody responsibility for childcare for their own children. I see this as a partnership. I think childcare is too important to be left to private concern only. Under this government it's unrealistic to expect that they're going to spend money on childcare, although constant ministerial pronouncements say that more childcare is necessary and they advise people to open up more childcare. In fact, there's no money and there's virtually no monitoring of standards. There's no provision for extra staff to monitor the standards in all the new nurseries that are setting up. I don't think we can look to the state to take that full responsibility. I think that's taking away responsibility from individuals. And that is an erosion of civil rights, if you like it. I don't think we can look to the employer to take up all the responsibility. That's an unfairness against other employees who don't have children. And I don't think we can look to certainly to poorer mothers to pick up all of the tab because they just won't be able to do it. As in all, the best answer is it has to be a compromise. The hospital doesn't subsidise the places, uh, the parents pay a rate each week. In my case here at the Rainbow Day Nursery, the nurses are charged £60 a week, so we're actually having a subsidy of £25 a week. I see the lifting of the tax on workplace nurseries for those who use it as the first step in a more child-oriented society, given that mothers are now going to work more. And I see this as a partnership between state, the employer and the mother. The tax on workplace nurseries has been lifted to the extent that the employer manages the childcare provision. However, childcare vouchers and allowances still have a tax liability for the parent. And parents who earn £8,500 or more, including the cost of the benefit, are liable for tax on the cost of the childcare voucher. I've said this to one or two colleagues recently, that probably that the nursery is the biggest um, thing that would tie me to the bank. What I'm concerned about is that, in a sense, it's a bit of a tired cottage, that if you give up your job, then your child loses a place at, at the nursery, and I don't think that's good for children. Neither do I believe that we want a society that gives us a priority, uh, um, nursery places, for children whose parents work. Why? There are plenty of women whose children need that facility, who are in bad housing or who simply themselves want to break. All children, in my view, need socialising and need educational stimulation from a very early age. And to make it a priority for women that are working and then to lose it if they don't work, I think is crazy. A lot of contractors are setting up who have a purely business background, who have no experience of childcare and who have no qualifications in childcare. 
and they are seeing it as a source of profit. I don't think this is the way we ought to be going. It's not a business. Uh, it's not a money-making racket. And what we're talking about is a, child de- is ch- a child's development. And that ought to be the thing that's at the centre of this whole discussion. I have no idea how they're going to make a profit out of childcare because if you staff it properly and pay your staff adequate wages, there is no way that it's going to be profitable because childcare is quite expensive. However, having said that, there are a lot of contractors springing up offering to manage childcare on behalf of employers and our advice is they're not needed. If there are childcare organisations that can run at a good profit, you then begin to realise that it's not the mass base of mothers that that can buy into that service. Far from it, it tends to be highly professional women earning perhaps very good salaries. So it's it's very elitist in that sense. It, it, It creates a much, much bigger divide. Growth in any field of activity certainly means one has to watch very carefully the quality of the provision that is made. And you are quite right in worrying about uh, a proliferation of workplace nurseries, and will they all be of the right high standard? Well, that is why these nurseries have to be registered. And this gives the local councils the opportunity to check on the quality of care that they are provided. Are you a member of the NCMA? Yes. Yes. And the normal fees that you charge? 125 an hour. All the guidelines are the same for a creche, a day nursery or a playgroup. So we require all the same things. It, obviously it varies from a playgroup to a day nursery because the day nursery provides uh, full day care, not sessional care. And you've got a fire guard in the stair gate, haven't you? Yes. I saw that as I came in. Yep. And a first aid box? The child has to go through the same guidelines as far as having police checks and references and health check. But of course, it's not only the child mind that has to have a police check, it's the husband and anybody else who living, who's living in the house. Clearly that's a very important safeguard for people who are looking after young children. When the Children Act comes into force, then that system will be tightened up a bit um, and will include everyone who looks after children up to the age of eight, which it doesn't at the moment, it stops at five. So that will be an improvement. Mm, Turn it over for me. See what happens next, shall we? The regulations are on the vague side at the moment. For instance, the local authority may refuse to register someone if they don't consider that she's a fit person. The child mind. Now, that's quite a difficult phrase to define. We would prefer that phrase to be clearly defined um, and for more people to be refused registration in the name of good quality care. And every six months you're checked. They check your register, your children, your standards. Check everything is is as it was when you were first registered. So hopefully the standard doesn't change at all. If it does, then they have the right to close you down. I go and have a a look at the the building that they're hoping to use and just say whether I think it would be suitable or not. And then I get in contact with the fire brigade and they come round and have a look and tell, give a report to me about their recommendations. And then the person who's going to run it has to get in contact. Perhaps what is looked for is is things like physical cleanliness and numbers of square inches per child, rather than the quality of the relationships within the nursery and the way whether or not the children are actually um, responded to appropriately. I mean, I think most people now in this debate are stressing the importance of quality (laughs) of, of care for children, and, but very few people actually say, what is this quality? They know it's a word you should discuss. Um, and it's really, what is substitute parenting? I mean, first of all, you need to look at what is good parenting, which I managed, which I, I mentioned a little bit earlier, which is uh, somebody who gets to know a child and a child feeling it's, it's being known, uh, and that nurses can, and teachers, nursery teachers, can organise their institutions in such a way that this can happen. (laughs) You can see, I think, in this video how in a small group the children are really involved in what's going on. There's a lot of talk between the staff, the carer and the children. She's talking to them 
they're talking back, it's all making sense. They feel that they're saying something that's then responded to, it's understood. So you're just stepping in and filling that gap and taking that role for the mother, I think, and providing the carers of the quality we're all looking about. Then, then the children don't seem to suffer at all. Mm. You've got to build a bond and a relationship and the parent has to accept your bond with their child, which is, a, which is quite a big thing for a mother to yes. be able to do. In my opinion, this is the cost that, that mothers who want childminders have to pay because a young child needs to feel attached to whoever it is is looking after them. Um, some mothers say, well, he's just as, as fond of me as he is of his childminder. Um, that may be so, but I don't think that someone else's child is the same as your own child. There's a different quality of feeling. And providing it's done very carefully, then someone can take the role of the parent. But it's no good just putting them here or thinking, that's good, that's good for me. It has to be good for the child and fit in with the parent. I think this is what it's all about. Yes, yeah, so you're very I'm much a like a surrogate mother, yes, aren't you? Yes, for, yes. For, for, for some the of role the of the child comes first and the parent yeah. afterwards, I'm yeah. afraid. Whereas this group, where there's about 30 children and one person trying to read a story to them, half the time is being taken quietening them down. The other staff who could actually be reading stories to small groups of children in the same way as in the previous situation are just sitting listening. There's a great deal of autoerotic behavior, thumb sucking, touching of ears, sort of self-comforting that goes on. Great deal of boredom. If those four staff who were just lined up would actually break up into small continuous groups that they meet the same children every day for their lunch and their stories so that they get to know each other. If you think that in fact it's the early years that are the whole basis for later functioning, it's important and crucial that we actually get this time right because if you have a secure base, if a child feels secure early on, has an attachment figure that it feels it can trust, that it knows, that knows it, then very soon we'll learn that it can begin to safely go out and explore the environment and know that that person is there, they can come back to, they can trust. And that's what we need to foster in any kind of, of care for young children. I believe that the future answer to childcare provision and to encouraging working mothers to continue in work and to enhance their job prospects and their career is a partnership between the public and the private sector and with parent parental involvement. I think um, was it the Secretary of State who said recently that childcare is very expensive? Well, I think it is. And I think that has to be recognised. But then so is defence, you know. Where are your values? Spend on defence or spend on childcare? There is a danger that we may be seeing a flash in the pan, which will last only as long as the so-called demographic time bomb lasts. When there are more young people in the workforce in perhaps five, ten years' time, um, and women, married women, are not needed um, in the workplace, it's perhaps easy to see that the government may not be so interested in the provision of daycare. In fact, very little solid support to daycare has been provided. The Children Act talks about regulations and has attempted to tighten up quality, but in terms of actual cash in the hands of those who provide daycare, for instance, local authorities, Almost nothing has been provided. And the government's slogan appears to be, business will provide. Well, it won't. It hasn't so far. Because we can't work any far.